good afternoon again. It's a pleasure for me to introduce NewMap to you. NewMap is a Swiss biotech company focusing on multi-specific uh, antibodies in cancer therapy. We entertain a um, breakthrough multi-specific platform that allows us to create entirely novel mechanisms of action, which we use uh, against validated targets and aim for improving the benefit to risk profile of existing drugs. We have two lead programs. One is ND21 that is about to enter clinical testing in cancer patients in summer of this year. We have a second program uh, that's uh, atopic disease therapy, uh, multi-specific as well, which is in clinical preclinical development right now. And our pipeline is growing with the multi-specifics with very differentiated mechanisms of action in cancer. We follow a dual business strategy. On one hand, we partner globally, that's discovery collaborations. Through these collaborations, we have collected revenues exceeding 40 million Swiss francs up to now. And in addition, we aim at partnering our proprietary assets regionally uh, in Asian territories to fund global development of the clinical proof of concept. Up to now, we have attracted uh, more than 26 million Swiss francs uh, from e equity investments. The team has very successfully worked together before. All of the management members come from Espotec, uh, where we have developed a drug called Prelucizumab, now known as BioView, that came to market last year for the therapy of AMD. Uh, we, the team is supported by Daniel Vazella, former CEO of Novartis, and Chenping Shu, coming from 3S Bio. The technology platform that we have developed is based on three pillars. Each pillar is a best-in-class component in antibody discovery and together constitutes a breakthrough platform. We start with immunization of rabbits as rabbits come up with outstanding affinities. We have developed a technology that allows us to exhaustively characterize the immune repertoire of an animal and very selectively identify the needles in the haystack that present the antibodies of choice. After identification of a suitable antibody, we subject it to our Lambda Cap technology that allows us to very reproducibly humanize, stabilize, and fragmentize these rabbit antibodies into human variable domains. The advantage of this approach is that we can fully maintain affinity of rabbit antibodies. In addition, we, we uh, generate stable fragments that uh, are drug-like in their properties, meaning they are soluble, stable, and easy to manufacture. These fragments are then the building blocks we use for the generation of multi-specifics using our proprietary match formatting platform. Matches can contain up to six different specificities in one molecule and really allow us to extend the design space of therapeutics. Multi-specificity allows us to restrict certain activities to certain tissues, for example, to tumor tissues. We can combine synergistic mechanisms of action in one molecule and further on avoid financial toxicity in development, in manufacturing, and also avoid certain regulatory constraints in the development of combination therapies. Importantly, the, the high affinity of rabbit antibodies and the clean design of the matches allow us to very cleanly design these molecules to avoid any off-target activities that may originate from FC domain or, the, or other non-binding domains of biotherapeutics. Our pipeline is uh, composed of three categories. The first category is globally partnered programs. Here our partners are Japanese pharma companies, that's uh, Telot's Theria Group, that's Ono, a pioneer in PD-1, 
uh, therapies and with ASI we have two multi-specific programs ongoing targeting cancer. Then our second category are our proprietary assets which we regionally partnered. Our immune oncology asset ND21 is partnered with Seastone Pharmaceutical uh, for commercial rights in China and our atopic disease program ND26, another multi-specific antibody, is partnered with Keiken Pharmaceutical in Japan uh, who obtains regional rights in their territory in exchange for funding global development up to clinical proof of concept. In addition, we have an ever-growing pipeline of multi-specifics in cancer uh, that follow very differentiated mechanisms of action. Our most recent deal uh, we have done with 3S Bio, that's a Chinese pharma company, similar to the deals that I mentioned before. Also, this deal follows a regional structure. Here, 3S Bio has the option to acquire commercial rights to China for up to three programs and in exchange will fund global development activities. In addition, 3S Bio has invested 15 million in our recently closed Series B financing round. Now I would like to focus on our lead immune oncology program, ND21. ND21 is a tri-specific molecule concomitantly binding to 4-1-BB, PDL1 and serum albumin. The problem that we are trying to solve with this molecule is to overcome severe exhaustion, which is one of the reasons or the main reason why only 20% of patients respond to PD-1 blockade. Reasons for that are uh, that cancer cells produce immune suppressive factors that drive anti-cancer T cells into severe exhaustion. Now, blockade of PD-1 or PDL1 axis alone is not sufficient to reinvigorate immune cells to fight cancer. It has been shown that 4-1-BB agonism in combination with PDL1 blockade can overcome severe exhaustion and activate anti-cancer immune responses. However, systemic 4-1-BB agonism is severely toxic and leads to treatment limiting liver inflammation. The reason for that is exemplified by Urelumab. Urelumab is a 4-1-BB agonistic IgG which through its bivalent mode of interaction leads to the dimerization of 4-1-BB on immune cells, not only in the tumor microenvironment, but also in all other parts of the body. This systemic 4-1-BB activation leads to systemic T-cell activation, finally resulting in liver inflammation. To avoid this liver inflammation, we designed a molecule that is tri-specific but monovalent. It binds with one moiety to 4-1-BB, with a second moiety to PDL1 and a third moiety to serum albumin to prolong its half-life in the circulation. Monovalent interaction with 4-1-BB is completely inert. It will not lead to dimerization of 4-1-BB and therefore not activate T cells outside of the tumor. Only up binding to high density PDL1 expressed on tumor cells, it leads to cluster formation on the tumor surface and in turn stimulates 4-1-BB signaling. So what we achieve with this is the synergistic effect of highly potent PDL1 blockade, tumor restricted 4-1-BB activation. So we avoid systemic toxicity and result in synergistic effects. In vitro, this mechanism of action has been proven. We see here in a situation in absence of PDL1, our tri-specific has zero capacity to induce 4-1-BB signaling. In contrast, urelumab, that's a 4-1-BB agonist, uh, here activates 4-1-BB independent of PDL1 presence. In a situation resembling cancer, 
where we do have PDL1 expression on cell surface, we see a very strong activity of 4 1 BB, uh, similar to that of urelumab in green. In a assay that allows us to assess the synergistic potential of the two pathways, we see that our tri-specific, due to the immunological synapse formation between tumor cell and T cells, a very strong capacity to stimulate T cells, which outperforms clearly the combination of IgGs against the two targets. You have here, for example, in black, the combination of the PDL1 blocker Avelumab with the 41BB agonist uh, Urelumab. We have tested this uh, approach in a variety of tumor models. You see here the results uh, in humanized mice carrying a human non-small cell lung cancer. We see tumor growth with a control IgG, a reduction of about 50% with urelumab and similarly with avelumab, a PDL1 blocker. And again, our tri-specific clearly outperforms these two drugs in efficacy. If we look into the tumor microenvironment, here we see a very pronounced expansion of anti-cancer T cells, which is clearly more pronounced than with single agent or even the combination therapy with IgGs. Most importantly, this concept is safe. In monkeys, we could not see any signal for liver toxicity. We followed um, the activity of aminotransferases, of liver aminotransferases, ALT and AST. When compared to Avelumab, a safe PDL1 blocker, or to pre-dose uh, levels, there is no detectable increase of aminotransferase activity in any of the, of the animals and everything is within the normal range here for these markers. In the same study, we followed PK. In monkeys, we see a half-life of about five to six days due to the serum albumin binding, which corresponds to about two weeks in humans, supporting a convenient dosing regimen uh, of uh, one dose every three to four weeks. This program, as I mentioned before, has been partnered with Seastone Pharmaceutical, Chinese company. Under this agreement, Seastone receives commercial rights to China, South Korea and Singapore and in exchange funds global development uh, of our drug up to clinical proof of concept. NUMAP controls clinical development globally and keeps the rights to the rest of the world. This is an outlook of what we are going to do with the platform and in our pipeline programs. In contrast to ND21, which you see depicted on the left side of this slide, we are expanding to four specificities here using a match four format, where we simultaneously target two molecules on the tumor cell or two targets on a T cell. What this allows us to do is to avoid tumor escape by downregulation of one of the targets and also to improve selectivity of T cell engaging principles. On the other hand, it allows us by targeting two T cell stimulatory receptors to not only activate T cells against cancer cells, but further to differentiate them into memory formation. Basically, this approach is mimicking a CAR-T approach with a pharmacological concept. The available funds today allow us to demonstrate clinical proof of concept for ND21. So we will initiate those escalation studies in summer of this year, plan to do a cohort expansion by the end of 21 and have an interim readout between 21 and 22. In addition, we will develop ND26, our atopic disease program, which is funded already up to phase two clinical proof of concept. And we will bring one of our 
IO pipeline programs into formal preclinical development. In order to accelerate clinical development to the market, to expand on cohorts and prepare for several cohort expansions by 22, we are now starting our campaign to raise additional money in a Series C to be closed by beginning of 21. With this, I would like to thank you and I'm happy to answer questions.